Hey, welcome back. I'm the book guy and I'm really excited today to be introducing a small underground indie author to a wider audience. There are a lot of indie authors out there and I think most people would happily read self-published books if they knew which ones were the good ones. And that's kinda where I come in. I've been reading a ton of indie books over the last year. Now some of these authors have reached out to me, others I've searched for on my own. But I've done a lot of research on this, because I only want to recommend books if I can wholeheartedly vouch for them with 100% authenticity. With that being said, I now wholeheartedly vouch for the Kinetic series with 100% authenticity. Kinetics is a young adult sci-fi series with a strong dose of dystopian. But this is good YA dystopian. This is like The Hunger Games, not like Divergent. <laughs> There are three books in this series so far, with books 4 and 5 set to conclude the series in the next 15 months. I would love to see this series get a wider recognition and the book launches of books 4 and 5 to actually have a sizable audience waiting for it. Still, let me tell you about this indie series and why you should read it. One note first, you probably noticed that these three book covers on my shelves are a bit different to the ones I displayed in the opening. It's because the series has recently done a bit of a rebranding to suit it a little bit better. You see, the original covers were hand drawn illustrations. The artwork is quite fine, but the covers are a bit misleading, because these look like middle grade books that are sort of action adventure-y. In reality, Kinetics is a YA sci-fi dystopian series, and the new covers match that a lot better. Now not to brag here, but I was the first to mention this to the author and it did kind of start the whole process and long story short I saved the freaking day. Now I'm just kidding, it was just like a chat we had, I had very little to do with this. But I do love the new covers, they 100% match the story a lot better. But I'll stop taking credit for it and I'll just pitch the damn series. Eugene Yoshida was just your average boy. Until he wasn't. <laughs> Just kidding. Eugene goes to school with his best friend Willow. Their school comes under attack as everyone experiences psychic visions of their worst fears. And Eugene sees nightmarish visions of fire and death. The attacker was a kinetic who went rogue and lost control of their powers. You see, there are a rare group of humans who have kept secret their incredible powers for thousands of years. They were called demigods in one age and wizards in another. Now they're called kinetics. It turns out Willow is a kinetic with the power to heal, and Eugene has the power of fire. Except Eugene is afraid of fire. Can I just say, the concept of a fire-powered character with pyrophobia is just one of the coolest ideas and it's really well executed here. So why are the kinetics kept secret by all the world governments? Because for thousands of years, Earth has been at war with an invading alien force known as Isero, who has come to Earth to steal the power of kinetics. No sooner does Eugene learn about this insidious invader when Willow is kidnapped by them. Isero wants her specifically as its new host. Imagine a host body capable of healing itself. It would become virtually unstoppable. Eugene teams up with government agents and begins a journey across the states, determined to access his latent power no matter the cost. He would do anything to save his best friend from these alien invaders. Now before we go into all the important stuff like plot and characters, let's just talk about themes because this is honestly my favourite part of Kinetics. So young adult books often deal with the coming of age story. They can be a little predictable and maybe perhaps juvenile, but Kinetics avoids all of those common pitfalls and instead dives headfirst into heavy topics, which is why I compared it to The Hunger Games and not Divergent. Kinetics does not pull its punches either. I'm a firm believer that children and teens are a lot smarter than most people think and many of them can handle big stuff. I love stories that don't talk down to their audience. So let's look at a few themes. One big theme is questioning authority, which is a classic theme in YA books. Books, but it's rarely handled this well. Eugene is presented with a lot of information at the start of book one about the role of kinetics in the war with the alien invasion. But reality is often a lot more complicated. I mean, how many of us thought as children that life was going to be a very simple good versus evil situation only to grow up and realize that the world is covered with shades of grey? This story explores the reality behind the information we're told as children and young adults. Often life has a way of 
punishing those who don't question authority. Another big theme is the idea of pure good and pure evil. This story presents evil characters who sometimes show acts of mercy, and good characters who are merciless. There is a beautiful yin-yang to the characters here. It shows the duality of human nature, and proves why we should question authority if it ever tries to claim that this group is pure evil or pure good. Another big theme, and perhaps the most powerful, is this story shows conflict through the eyes of children and teens. Often books and films will show us war through the eyes of the brilliant generals who mastermind big maneuvers, or the brave soldiers doing daring acts. This story shows us war through the eyes of the young, those who often have no idea how to even comprehend what they're seeing, let alone try to take action. As children, we often feel powerless, even if we have fire powers. There is also my favourite theme, failure. Which I know just sounds cynical, but I love when stories establish that failure is a real possibility. So many stories show our hero in dangerous situations, but we're only truly worried if we've seen failure already happen on screen. So this story lets our characters fall short sometimes, and it makes for some very tense storytelling. But it also shows the incredible theme of coping with failure and learning what to do after. Why do we fall so, so that we can learn? to pick ourselves up. This is exactly the type of story I would love to see more of in YA. And one final theme is the hero's journey. So Kinetics takes the hero's journey and just messes it up in clever ways. You know, subverting expectations, and god I hate that phrase. But it's true here. Kinetics includes the hero's journey in all three books, and yet shows us how stories can differ very much from reality. So why are all these themes such a big deal to me? Why am I talking about them first? Because they require skilled writing to make them work. A lot of young adult authors try to act like they're talking about big mature themes, but they're not actually talking about anything important. They're talking about non-issues that aren't really controversial at all. I'm against crime, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. You can't pretend you're discussing heavy topics just for points. Kinetics actually has real topics that are worth discussing. But most importantly at all, these themes are discussed, not preached. Some stories can be didactic, where you tell your story with an ulterior motive to teach a lesson. Very common in writing books for kids and teens. Kinetics does a good job of exploring these ideas without pushing the beliefs on you. So that is what I truly love about Kinetics and why I'm quite happy to recommend it today. It takes serious skill for a writer to handle all of these themes in a balanced, insightful way. And speaking of skill, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I am thrilled to have a chance to partner with Skillshare because I have already been taking their classes. Two years ago, when I wanted to start a YouTube channel, I knew absolutely nothing about making videos. I was terrible with technology and frankly kind of terrified of it. That's why I started using Skillshare. I took this exact class, Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners by Geordie Vanderput. It gave me all the skills I needed to start this channel and also help my work stand out from other booktubers. What's the difference between you and me? Are you Skillshare? Skillshare has the largest online learning community for creatives. Their range of topics is staggering, with thousands of classes in categories like illustration, creative writing, photography, music, and marketing, ranging from beginner levels to advanced. So even if you're starting from scratch, or if you're pretty skilled already, Skillshare can get you to the next level. With classes made by creatives for creatives, Skillshare offers a learn-by-doing approach, with opportunities to practice as you go. Skillshare is partnering with me to offer you guys one month of free classes. The first 500 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And you will be amazed with how much you can learn in just one month. So if you're considering a new career in a creative field, or if you just want to explore that passion you've always had inside, Skillshare will get you where you need to go. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for helping me draw attention to indie book series like Kinetics. Now let's dive deeper into this series. The world of Kinetics is set within our own world, but in a secret war scenario. 
There are a few players in this game. So first we have the Anyan Alliance, sort of like a United Nations organization, a combination of multiple world governments determined to fight back against the alien invasion. Next we have Isero, the alien force in question. We know next to nothing about it, except that it has been trying to harvest kinetics for its purposes for thousands of years, and it just refuses to die. Then there are the kinetics themselves. This is the widest group of characters and the most disorganized. Many are kinetics like Eugene, who have no idea that they even had power. Some are like Eugene's older brother Jacob, who work for the Alliance and has honed his powers into a finely tuned weapon. Other kinetics serve the alien Isero, joining his legion, though willingly or as slaves we can't really tell. I want to add one thing. This story may be set within the real world, but it's not exactly an urban sci-fi. This is a true sci-fi, meaning we get some big alien space technology concepts. Just a heads up on that. Now there is a magic system of a sorts with the kinetics and their powers, but it's also pretty standard. These are superhero powers like you see in X-Men or many other YA books like Fourth Wing and Throne of Glass, etc. But the story is also not trying to reinvent the wheel here. These are straightforward magics and it knows that. Although unlike X-Men, kinetics actually use their powers to full effect. There's no safety mode, they shoot to kill. So that's kind of refreshing. So many of these plot lines are based around the hero's journey and the clever subversions of that trope. Let's look at a few examples while avoiding spoilers for the rest of the series. Eugene struggles with being a bit young and naive in book one. Yet in book two, there's a fantastic plotline where he has to act as a double agent, playing for both sides. It's a terrific challenge to take a fundamentally honest character and put him in a situation where he needs to lie, very much like Captain America in The Winter Soldier. Another plotline is a group of kinetics plan to use their powers to break into a mighty fortress. Yes, it's a magical heist, very much Mistborn vibes. Although Mistborn does it better. You know, I should have made the comparison. The point is, magic Magical heists are awesome. There is a plotline around exploring the mystery of the alien Isero, learning the secrets of its origins and its homeworld, and maybe even going so far as to counterattack. And that's the uh, the big sci-fi plotline here, and it gets pretty epic. But Isero isn't the only one with secrets. The Alliance has its own mysteries as well, and the plotlines where we explore what they're up to are just as thrilling. So looking at three characters to give you an example here, our main character is Eugene Yoshida. He is a fascinating character, but he can be frustrating at times, which is a good thing. He's meant to be. You know how I'm always saying characters should make mistakes? Yeah, Eugene makes a few. Eugene is a young and idealistic person in a world that is often unfair and deals in shades of grey. But this makes it all the more satisfying when he matures over the course of the series. Plus, his whole journey of overcoming his fear of fire is a highlight of the whole damn thing. Willow is also quite idealistic, but in different ways. I kind of want to call her an activist character. She's that type of person who will travel to poorer countries and dig wells and then post about it on Instagram and try to change the world. She thinks she's going to save everyone. In a similar way to Eugene, she has to face reality a little bit and accept the complexity of real life. Sometimes fixing the world requires more than just talking about your projects and passions. Sometimes it means fighting back. Finally, Jacob is Eugene's older brother, and in many ways he is what Eugene would become if Eugene never lost his idealism. Jacob sees the world as very much black and white, and that makes him dangerous. He is relentless, uncompromising, and sees himself as the knight in shining armor ready to save the world. Now I do have to address the elephant in the room. So the author Arba Barrow sent me these books a full year ago and I posted about it. I actually sat on these books for all that time because I wasn't sure how to present them. I wasn't sure if people were going to watch books by unknown authors. Then I realized I don't care. <laughs> 
But anyway, Abba sent them to me, and she straight up told me she started this series when she was very young, and book one was published when she was just 22. So I will freely admit, book one can be a teensy bit rough in places. Some of the prose can be a bit blunt and bland, and some of the trickier storytelling elements can be a bit clumsy in their execution. That said, each book is very much better than the last, and I absolutely loved book three. By the third book, this felt like a polished, professionally produced novel. And that's why I'm determined to give Kinetics its own video, because it ended up being so strong. And I'm very excited for books 4 and 5 to cap off and finish this series. Book 4 is coming out this year on Christmas Day, and book 5 is coming out Christmas next year. Regarding representation, Kinetics deals a lot with themes of race. In fact, the author posted this picture of all the places the story has visited. And sorry if that's a little bit spoilery, but as you can see, we travel to a lot of places and meet a lot of different people. And our main character, Eugene Yoshida, is American Japanese. A curious thing though, Kinetics is pretty male dominated. It's not a story with 50-50 male and female characters. Now sometimes we expect female authors to write a billion female characters to sort of over-represent, but they don't actually have to. It's a nuanced discussion I'm just not going to go into today. While we don't see a lot of LGBT or disability rep, we do see a lot of depictions of teens dealing with grief, trauma, PTSD, and general mental health challenges, and I think that's the real focus of the representation in this story. Bit of a content warning, this is a young adult series, yet at certain times it can be pretty violent. This is meant to be a realistic depiction of war and conflict, and real war is a whole lot messier than what we usually see in Hollywood. Arba does an amazing job of using precisely the right amount of graphic violence. Not hiding the violence to underplay the reality of the situation, but also not hyping it up to be edgy and hardcore. Just enough to show the harshness of war. That said, that's also kind of it for the content warning side of things. I can't remember any swearing, there's zero sexual content, though you may consider some of those heavier themes I mentioned earlier to be adult themes, but that's about it. Is the ending worth it? I think the ending will be worth it. The jump up in quality is pretty impressive across the three books, so I think Arba has the skills now to end this series just perfectly. I am extremely excited for it. As for how much should you try, this is a bit of a trickier question. I think book one is a strong novel overall, and we'll show you what the series is about, but it just has a few areas of weaker writing. I think you can sample just book one and know if the series is right for you. Just remember that it improves with each book, and by book three it has become very strong. Now, because this is an indie author, I am going to hard sell you on these books a little bit more than normal because indie authors really thrive on that word of mouth recommendation. So if you want to support Arbor Barrow and the Kinetic series, there is a link in my description to where you can buy these books off the author's website directly. You can also check out Arbor Barrow's social media links and Arbor is currently doing a special offer. This is pretty cool. She is donating a whopping 50% minimum of book sales to the Native American Indian Association of Tennessee to contribute to their community center and cultural center. So you can support a good cause and kind of get a free book out of it. That's pretty cool. Also, all three books have audiobooks available, which is pretty rare for indie authors. So you can check them out on Audible. I think they still have the old covers though. So check out all her stuff, support an indie author, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Good luck and happy reading. Thanks for watching, and I especially appreciate you watching a video on an unknown author. I've got a few more of these coming this month about small authors you haven't heard of, but you'll want to. Remember, this whole theme is to celebrate my own books coming to Kickstarter this month. The Immortal Investigations is my trilogy of books launching soon. Please support the official release when it comes to Kickstarter. Yes, that link is in the description below. There are a lot of links in today's video, so you've got to sort through it. But to add to the links, I also have a shop and I have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Otherwise, you can simply comment and subscribe to boost my video to the algorithm gods, which would be appreciated. I am the book guy and I will see you next time. Bye.